Well, good afternoon. Today we're going to look at a question that I received last night, and it was this. Are we living during the beginning of the Great Tribulation? This is a question that uh, fits into our contemporary context, in which many Christians are looking around, and I trust unbelievers as well, and wondering about this time period and seeing the fact that there are natural disasters that feel as though they are happening uh, with increased frequency and uh, tenacity. We see that uh, Christi Christianity has been under increasing hostility in our nation. Uh, we find that there is political upheaval in our country and of course the pandemic which is happening all around the world and in our community has uh, started to uh, really affect uh, many families in our community and our church family whom we want to continue to keep in our prayers. And so uh, with all of that going on, Christians are looking around and wondering, is this the, the great tribulation period? Is this a time of unique difficulty? And so what I want to do is I want to read from 1 Thessalonians a little bit, uh, talk about what the great tribulation is and whether or not we are in it, or whether or not we ever will be in it as followers of Jesus Christ. So uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through chapter 5, verse 9, it, it reads this way. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will raise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And let me just pause there for a moment. Uh, this verse is commonly used as a proof text for the rapture of the church, of which I am a believer. And uh, some may look at Scripture and say, well, the word rapture is never found in Scripture, and they would be right. Uh, so let's call it the doctrine of being caught up together, uh, because uh, the word rapture comes from the Latin translation of that phrase. So the doctrine of being caught up together, or the rapture. Uh, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Verse 18, therefore encourage one another with these words. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will call, come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night nor of the darkness. So, that, so then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us, this is, an, this is a significant passage, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. I'm going to read one other passage, and that is from Jeremiah chapter 30. It says this, in verse 4 and on. These are the words the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard, terror, not peace. Ask and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Labor pains were described in 1 Thessalonians. We're going to find them referenced a number of times in Revelations. And every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. What's happening in these passages, and how does that uh, answer the question that I've received this week? Well, the question that I received uh, assumes that there is a great tribulation period. For uh, premillennial believers, uh, biblical literalists here of of end times prophecy, uh, the uh, we understand the the tribulation period to represent a seven year period of time 
in which the Antichrist will have an opportunity to delude people because people will be given over to their sins. The things that they truly desire uh, and their rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ will result in them heaping judgment upon themselves. In fact, in the book of Revelations, we find that even when confronted with their sin, even as the Lord's wrath is being poured out on these people, they do not turn and repent from their sins. Instead, they continue to curse God further. So uh, this is a time period in which the Antichrist will be revealed after three and a half years, during which he would have uh, resumed uh, some temple activity in Israel. Uh, he would have uh, been seen as a as the Messiah by uh, the Jews. He would have established world peace. Uh, three and a half years in, he will turn on the nation of Israel, at which point they will realize that they have missed the true Messiah, Jesus Christ, and they will lament for him. Many will turn in saving faith, believing in Jesus Christ for salvation. We know in, in the revelations that a number of them, 144,000, will come to saving faith in Jesus Jesus Christ and be killed for their faith during this time period. Israel will then be surrounded by the nations around them, and then the Lord Jesus Christ will return. He, with uh, all of the saints, all of those who have died in Christ Jesus, return to undo the works of the Antichrist, and the Lord will establish the Millennial Kingdom, the literal thousand-year reign of Jesus upon King David's throne. And so we look forward uh, to that day. Uh, but that is the great tribulational period. Uh, the biblical literalist uh, would find in Scripture that we are delivered from the wrath that is to come. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. In context here, when he talks about us not suffering the wrath of God, what he means is the unique period of time in which God's wrath is poured out upon the unbelieving world. And so that would be the Great Tribulation. That is exactly what it is, is a program of God's divine wrath being poured out on the unbelieving world. In addition to the unbelieving world in general, we find that it is a uniquely challenging time for the people of Israel because of their rejection of the Messiah, because of the fact that they had been given special revelation. God had de determined to reveal himself through them. Be because of that, they had heaped further judgment on themselves through rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, one may think that designated this period of time as a unique time of Jacob's trouble, which is exactly what it says there in Jeremiah chapter 30, uh, when one reads that, one might think, well, God uh, is being anti-Semitic or Christians who assume that passage are, uh, you know, saying something negative about the Jewish people. We need to understand that in context, that's not at all the case. In fact, it says in Jeremiah chapter 30, and he will be saved out of it. This is actually giving Israel an opportunity to recognize uh, the fact that the Antichrist is not the Messiah and because of the discipline that they receive, to have an opportunity to come to saving faith in Jesus, and many of them will. And so this is God's gracious work uh, to the nation of Israel, even though uh, there is certainly a judgment that corresponds with that or sets the stage for it. So uh, that's a little bit difficult for us sometimes to, to wrap our minds around, but God is sovereign and He's fully in control. So. With that then, uh, the question might be, well, are we living in the beginning stages of the Great Tribulation? Let me say this, uh, based off of what we've read and what we've briefly discussed. Christians will not be here for the tribulational period. We will not be here for the Great Tribulation. Sure, uh, there are difficulties in this life. Everybody, uh, should the Lord tarry, will experience physical death, sickness, and other troubles that come with living in a fallen world. We understand that. But Christians are not appointed to suffer God's wrath. And so we will be caught up together with the Lord in the air. We will be raptured before the unique period of the Great Tribulation. That means that we will not be here when the Antichrist is revealed. We will not be here and have the opportunity to receive the mark of the beast. 
And so some of the questions that Christians often wrestle with, such as, is this technology the mark of the beast? Or I'm not going to do that because that's the mark of the beast. That is not a concern for us. We will simply not be here when there is a mark of the beast, uh, because we will not be here when the beast is here, the Antichrist. So that's something that Christians do not have to be alarmed about. Uh, also, uh, because we are going to be raptured there before the Antichrist comes, we don't have to uh, be concerned about the identity of the Antichrist. I'm not saying that any sort of speculation is bad or anything uh, like that, looking, uh, kind of asking questions about what the Antichrist is going to be like or anything like that. But uh, many Christians become overly consumed with that thought. I know uh, a Christian who uh, wrote to me uh a number of years ago, arguing that Barack Obama was the Antichrist. And I said, he's not the Antichrist. And we went back and forth on this. And he said, you'll see uh, after the election. And of course, um, Obama is not the Antichrist. Well, the same man <laughs> reached out to me last week to tell me that Donald Trump is the Antichrist, and that will be revealed soon. I can at least say this much for that man. He is nonpartisan. Uh, so we have that. Uh, but no, there's no good reason to uh, attach that sort of title to any American politician, as I don't think that corresponds with what we do know about the Antichrist in Scripture. Uh, but also, uh, we do not have to be overly consumed by that thought. Now, that does not mean that we do not have any thoughts about the rapture or about the tribulational period itself. Uh, we find in 1 Thessalonians 4.18 that this is a passage that has a lot of application. This doctrine is very relevant for us as believers. It says this, Therefore, encourage one another with these words. In a time in which there is so much upheaval, in which people are concerned about everything happening in our world, we can have confidence that we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not appointed to suffer wrath. Uh, we belong to the Lord and nothing could possibly separate us from his love. And so, even in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a time when there is increasing hostility against Christianity, uh, where there's increased natural disasters and things like that, Christians do not have to lose heart. We recognize that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. And so we can encourage one another saying, you know, no matter what happens, we're not going to be here when things hit the rock bottom, when things are the worst, because Jesus loves us and he's going to rapture us. He will, we will be caught up together in the clouds with him. But also, it should challenge the way that we live today. It says, it cautions us, and the word does in chapter 5 here of 1 Thessalonians, not to be children of the night, but to be sober-minded, to be people who are prepared, uh, to ask ourselves this question, if the Lord were to return right now, would he find me living faithfully for him? Would, he want, would I want to be found by the Lord where I am, doing what I'm doing and saying what I'm saying, if I were to stand before the Lord right now? Uh, with those sorts of thoughts in mind, then Christians, we need to make sure that we face each and every day uh, with the desire to bring God glory and with courage. It says this in verse 11, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. That's our responsibility today. We do not have to be worried that somehow we are in the tribulational period today. It's not appointed for you to go through that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, but instead to find encouragement and comfort, knowing that you belong to the Lord, that we are going to be raptured into his presence, and that we can face each and every day with courage uh, and with lives that glorify the Lord because of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me. I'd love to answer your questions. Any comments on this video? I'll do my best to interact with them. As I said, I didn't dive too deeply into the topic of the rapture, premillennialism, postmillennialism, amillennialism, any of that. Uh, just kind of scratch the surface because of time restraints. Uh, but I would say this for those who are interested in questions about the rapture, this book, The Rapture Question by John Wovert, is a Christian classic. And uh, now he does interact with a lot of theologians uh, that uh, are a little bit dated. Maybe some of the arguments could be brought up to date. Uh, but uh, this is a very valuable resource and inter, um, inter, interacts with the text uh, in very accurate and helpful ways. So I would encourage you to look into that work if you're interested. May the Lord bless you.